Hello viewers, I'm SB and welcome back to Total War Warhammer 2 Curse of the Vampire Coast where the Dark Elves are certainly feeling that curse. Alright, let's uh, let's do some damage here. First of all, Ronnie Jackson has hit level 5 and so he gets to feel the curse of the Fleet Treasurer. Which is to say that he will almost certainly die soon, because that is what happens. Uh, we need to level up some dudes here. You should probably get Root Marcher, Route Marcher, whatever. Although... He's just keeping this army warm for a little while anyway. I'm not sure who is going to get replaced. How many turns are we from? Burke Black is back in three. We also, like, we definitely have enough money to run another army now. Enough income, so we'll have to figure that out. Well, one thing at a time. First of all, Silostra, too far south to actually join in combat here. We could run her around the backside. Like, we're going to have to capture all this stuff at some point. But it feels a little silly to have Silostra doing it. We we had her playing Backfield Conqueror uh, for a long time, and it's certainly effective, but let's just, let's commit her up front. I want her fighting stuff. She is way more fun to use than the rest of the armies, so <laughs> let's actually use her. So, uh, could we take Nagaron to this turn, do you think? Maybe. Can we take the Temple of Cain this turn? Almost certainly. Okay, I'm going to let Silostra take Nagarond because I want her sort of as like the tip of the spear here as we head north. So I'm going to send Jimbo Sharp off to fight the Temple of Cain by himself, I think. And Ronnie Jackson can be support for Silostra. Not much reason for him to get in front of her. They're not going to be able to rebuild in any meaningful way. Certainly not in any way that would survive against Silostra in the next turn. So apparently this is all we can raise. Can I... Okay, there's local recruitment structures here. Oh yeah, let's get some Sirenes. Do we want to... I mean, we can pull stuff from the global pool too. So we probably want to just like replace all of these guys. Dark Elves are a little too heavily armied, armored for pistols to be any good at all. And like, also you two? Let's go two more units of Sirenes. And I'm going to kick you out as well. Yes, master. Mortars are... Oh, mortars are also one turn. That's pretty good. Okay, we might be going a little light on melee here. Whatever, it'll be fine. Celostra's here to protect him. All bones on deck. Right, you need to go grab the temple, and then he'll... Uh, it'll be Jimbo Sharp who heads up through Rakdo Gorge. Get them. All right, what do we actually have? They have quite a bit of ranged. That's a little concerning. So they have enough melee. Like, the Witch Elves are, are tough. Get us out Can I here. see what the map looks like? Yeah, there's a button for this. I almost never use it, but I probably should. Okay, so this map, it looks like this map maybe has safe zones, because I don't see... I can't tell if there are tower bulges along the sides. We might be able to just roll up into this corner area and bombard them. They can't do much about that. Yeah, alright, let's just do it. I think we can do it. And if we fail, it's not like uh, the end of the world, right? There will be no major consequences from this, and then we'll just take it in a couple of turns with one of the other armies. It looks to me like there are not, co not corner towers, so I think we could set up our army in a corner and just roll up into the dead zone and then get to expend our entire supply of ammunition for the mortars before having to do any actual work, which I am 100% down with as a plan. Except for the part, I guess, where it makes me sit still for 20 minutes and watch the mortars fire. Ah, we can do that part of the battle on fast forward. So they have... Like, they have a, a surprising amount of range. Their garrisons are actually reasonably well designed. Oh, yeah, there's huge dead zones. All right, well, let's take advantage of our superior armaments. You guys need to be as far forward as possible. And then, yeah, I mean, it's just going to be big bunches of dudes running forward as fast as we can. Uh, you guys do it. And you guys do it. Who the hell is this? Get over here. Hey, get over here. Okay, uh, 
I guess we could gamble. I didn't really need to do that. It doesn't matter. Like I said, we're going to be sitting outside of their uh, outside of their city for quite a long time. So I don't know exactly where we want to end up, but like forward. Forward is good. We don't want to go too far forward any further than we have to because I don't want to give them bow range on us. Okay, so here we go. This is the piece of information we needed. Where exactly does the tower zone end? It turns out the mortars are actually already in a pretty good spot. Uh, everybody else could potentially stop. Actually, we kind of picked the right spot, huh? Yeah, okay. Uh, I'm going to have these units on this side head inward a little bit. There we go. This guy needs to get near the artillery and just hang out. We have a lot of bonus ammunition here. What spells do we have? Okay. Nothing really great. Looks like we're on, uh, we're firing already. Get accuracy and reload skill up. Alright, they didn't bother to come up with a strategy that was resilient to mortar fire. Really, this is their own fault. Okay, I think we should be clear of the tower now. Alright, time for fast forward, because I really do think that we just want to sit here and wait until our mortars run out of ammo. I'm a little, I'm a little concerned about their garrison. I think they're actually kind of dangerous. And we don't really want to replenish anything until it gets to like half-ish, right? I think that's about how much it puts in. So we do have one or two brave riflemen shooting up at the walls. Uh, of course, let's put these guys both on guard mode, but it would be cool if... Wait, we are... Okay, yeah, you're in guard mode. Uh, one of you should probably start shooting at those dark shards. One of you should probably start shooting at these dark shards, because I think those guys are pretty much under control. Make sure we're hitting this on cooldown. Man, one of the mortars took a lot of damage while we were walking out of tower range. Okay, I like the fact that shots at this group of dark shards that miss just go down and hit people down below. That's pretty good. Probably we will be able to reduce most of their ranged units to a pretty small number of units here. Or a pretty small number of figures, rather. I don't know that they really have much of a play here, aside from stand there and take it. They could come out after us. If they tried that, I'd be able to form up my guns and do a proper gun line on them, but like maybe that's the right play for them. Right, run everything out and try to... If I, if I want to make a proper gun line, I'm probably going to have to put some of my guns either in tower range or in archer range. A heck of a lot better than what they're sitting through now. You can get replenished. Several more charges of that. Unfortunately, these guys are actually pretty tough to target due to the position of that tower. Oh, looks like they're going to fix that for me. Yeah, but they're just going to keep rotating fresh bodies into mortar range. I am, uh, I am fine with that. As soon as this comes off cooldown, we hit the other mortar with it. They should, they should do something. We're probably going to have to actually fight for the walls here. We could try to bomb out the gate, but I'm not sure that actually, like, trying to fight Witch Elves and Black Art Corsairs in point-blank range in the gate is actually all that helpful for us. And that uh, ammo that goes toward trying to kill the gate is probably not killing the optimal number of Dark Elves. You know how I feel about optimal murder. Okay, we can probably just ammo back up. I don't know why it, like, it has an 8 second duration. 
but it all of the ammo is applied immediately as far as I can tell so what is happening exactly during that duration can we aim at these guys yeah I could probably hit some of them doing a pretty good job of depleting their units Oh, look at them managing to dodge the incoming mortars. As soon as we fired, they knew and moved. Also, the battle music has stopped completely. The game is expressing disapproval, I think, of my strategy. But, like, there really is just no impetus for me to do anything before the mortars stop firing. And that's always true, but this time I'm, actually, I'm worried enough about how difficult this battle will be that I think it is worth actually uh, letting this all occur. We could probably focus a little bit more on the guys on the wall, because we're having trouble hitting the guys down there. Uh, I do want to try to finish off these Dark Shards, but... Looks like he'll mostly fire at the location where there aren't any Dark Shards currently. But I wonder if we could just break them. Because it's saying victory is within our grasp. I wonder if they'll just give up if we do this for long enough. Oh, you know what? I could be, uh, I could be doing Spiteful Shot. Now that we've actually generated some wins. Getting that big accuracy bonus. Yep, you can see the, the difference already. We're actually hitting some of those guys. It is eerie how the music stopped. Maybe the music's programmed to only play for the first 10 minutes of the battle and we just blew through those 10 minutes so quickly. I think I want to buff these ones. I'm, I'm more worried about the ones on the wall. They still have more health. So it's possible that we could focus fire on some of the damaged units and maybe actually cause them to permanently break. Maybe. Also, man, this has a remarkably long cooldown. Let's see if we can uh, see if we can crack a couple of these ranged units at least. Can't really do anything about the dark shards that are staying close to the wall. They're a little, a little too smart for me here. Okay, so you want to retarget on these guys. It looks like we can cause a break. Might be hard to cause a permanent break, but this is a pretty small number of total dudes now. And any damage will probably kill each of them. And then we're going to have to probably just climb the wall and fight after we're done with this. That is, why, that is a big part of why I am so interested in uh, breaking what we can while we can. At some point in the near future, this becomes a battle that is not advantageous to us. It'd be really cool if they had no archers left by the time I made my approach. Because we can approach the wall completely safely by just climbing up here. Hoping we might get a little bit of uh, leadership chain reaction on this one. Cause a bunch of breaks to cause a bunch of other breaks. But I think it's just uh, it's about time we got moving here. I guess there's, there's no reason not to let our guy run completely out. Our remaining mortar. So we're going to have to fight a full unit of Witch Elves, half a unit of Black Arcs, two full units of Witch Elves. All of their Dark Riders are still alive, but Cavalry are pretty irrelevant if we can take the wall, because we can just line the wall with guns, and the Cavalry don't really have a lot of counterplay on that. The Witch Elves... With your final shots. Here, have accuracy. Really mess those witch elves up. Come on. Okay, that's yeah, that's not bad. Looks like we got one volley left, maybe. Yep, that was indeed it. Well, it did some damage. Alright. Time to fight. <laughs> now that now that all of their units are dead, it is time to fight. We Alright. 
Guns up. He can still do some enchanted ballistics to improve the uh, accuracy of our gunners. They have some bows, but not very many. If we fail to take the walls, I shall be very sad. It might be worth it to actually have our vampire lord, like, run along to somewhere else. He could just attack the gate, but maybe, like, try to climb him over and get a hold of the gate controls. I guess if he, if he tried to drop down inside the wall, he would be punished. I'm going to let the guns get in position and see if they have any actual uh, ability to shoot at the enemy before we start climbing. Because if they can shoot, obviously we're going to let them. and take full advantage of our range here. Can I throw grenades up onto the wall? Yes. Throw grenades at those witch elves. <laughs> I missed. They hit those poor corsairs. Uh, a little bit of shooting occurred. Well, if you're going to shoot, get them. Yeah, I mean, they're doing some damage. They're doing some uh, some leadership damage, at least. We don't have any more bonus uh, ammo, but we sure do have an awful lot of infinite ballistics buffs. Let's see, we can throw Tide Call over the wall, but I don't, I don't know that it's going to do a lot of damage to these Dark Riders. I guess we can try it. Don't have the ability to overcast. Let's see. Uh, let's see if there's any real damage here at all. It'd be best if they weren't moving. Well, it did more than zero damage, which I guess is the threshold for my winds of magic at this point. Because what else am I going to do with them? You know they're up there, frustrated as hell. Just like if they would just fight fair and stand in melee range, just shoot at a, just like, sword fight with us a little bit. I know we could beat them. Spell. Yeah, the cavalry are not a problem. The problem is getting our ranged onto the wall safely. Uh, we have very few units that can fight worth a dam in this army. That's a really cool looking spell. So I'd really love it if we could just, uh... Okay, permanent break, that's nice. Really love it if we could just get these Witch Elves dealt with. They are taking damage. A lot of the shots are missing, you know, crenellations on the wall and whatnot. But the moment we start putting bodies up there, we're going to completely lose our ability to shoot them. It looks like he's getting he's getting shots off too. His, his ammo is going down at least. He's trying. Man, his uh, grenade accuracy is poor. All right, I think this is this is looking like it. If they die or break, it is time. They keep coming back over. Like, it's going to be a good idea this time. You know what? I bet this time they won't shoot at us. They've got to be tired of shooting at us. They don't understand. There is nothing in this army's life except shooting at people. And also, these Dark Elves deserve it. More than maybe anyone has ever deserved it. I'm going to start climbing the wall now. we got to put bodies up on them at some point. And if we approach from the side like this... Then we can still uh, we can still shoot the units as they engage. Oh wow, the Death Hag really exposed herself there. She should not have run so close to the edge. She wants to engage as soon as she possibly can. She's just like itching for something to punch, but she really paid the price. Oh, we just popped their uh, their buff. We can certainly get our hero up here as well. Apparently my units have no compunction about firing through the sirens on the wall. Absolutely fine with them. 
I want to try to approach from here. <laughs> Why does already docked, huh? All right, the death hag is broken, and here we have their healthy units. So the good news is they're approaching from angles such that we can still shoot at them. Definitely throw up the shanty now. Defense and reload skill. Go, go, everybody. I'm going to intentionally not climb up here. We're going to try to keep that clean for firing, even though nobody's currently firing. And I'm going to keep shooting these uh, horsemen, because they keep standing in the middle of it. Bouncing off the wall here is actually helping us, I think. I was trying to keep the Sirens alive by keeping the Lord with them, you know, get that leadership aura on them, but it is tough to keep low-level Sirens from breaking. And you are really, like, out of out of good contributions here. So my plan for holding the the enemies in place that such that our guys can shoot at them is kind of working. Sometimes we get good volleys off. Sometimes they decide they would rather not. Our lord has been frenzied. He is not paying attention to his surroundings. And we're pretty close to just completely breaking all of their remaining melee troops. They have those guys and that's pretty much it. Alright, so that's a permanent break on those witch elves. Temporary break on the hag again. But if we can stay on her, we might be able to might be able to mob her and prevent her from getting out, which will probably lead to uh, a permanent break. No, not quite. All right. Well, she's a good runner. You got to give her that. All right. I think this might be an okay time to start putting ranged units up on the wall. Right, because we can take this part of the wall very easily. And then we can just fire down onto those horses. We do not have to, at any point during this, fight even the smallest bit fair. Him up there as well, so he can fire down. The Death Hag is coming back for a third round. You'd think, after the first two, she would just go home. But like, you know what? This, this crappy little settlement is lost. Also, it's remarkably unimportant. Really extremely not worth this fight. She sensed that we were moving up the riflemen and she was like, you know what, I could probably kill some riflemen. Oh, she, she came within firing range again. Get her. Don't let her kill those rifles. That's exactly what, she, what I said she was going to do. Okay, she's dead. Rifles take up positions. Is there other melee unit? No, it's not not actually broken yet. We're trying that. They are coated in blood. And you know that's all elf blood, because we don't have a lot of the units that they've been fighting don't actually have blood. It is adding up over time. We have a lot of winds of magic. All right, let's uh, let's send another unit of rifles up on the wall. These guys climb up over here and line this part of the wall. Okay, we're getting in position. We're starting to fire down off the wall. I think they're just going to give up now. They should have just given up a long time ago. Ooh, I did not tell you guys to get down there. Well, whatever. Doesn't matter. But yeah, I think the uh, the writing was finally on the wall in plain enough hand for them to read it. Having uh, They were having difficulty deducing the way the rest of the battle was going to go until that moment. So yeah, that's how you get to do siege battles when you have, uh, when you have artillery advantage. It's a thing we could do almost all of the time. 
any anytime you can find a spot where the enemy towers can't shoot you. But it's not very exciting, is it? So there's a big reason I don't do it a lot. So with this taken, that's part of Hagraif, I think, not part of Nagarond. We are going to have to actually put together the Nagarond province, and we have to build it up. Like, it has to be a, a real place that we put effort into holding on to. That said, I'm pretty sure it's valuable. I'm pretty sure it's a good money-making province. The, the port has to be worth something. So we have a lot of incentive to, uh, to build it up anyway. I was really not expecting loading out of this battle to take so much longer than loading into it did. Alright, what do we got? Some glittering scales. Okay, this is the last thing in Hagrave's province, in fact. Well, got our public order going. So, we're probably still going to need public order buildings. Uh, I think... Yeah, all right, I don't think there's anything else to do here. We'll go ahead and level you up, but you are definitely not sticking around. You, on the other hand, you are forever. Even more powder. Can you imagine how much easier that battle would have been if we had had even more powder? Okay, so we think there are vampires incoming, right? Or something. I thought there was some reason I was concerned about her, but I decided we were going to go fight... Bad guys on the sea anyway, right? Black so we wanted to fight Kruikshank. Good news, he is extremely within my movement area. Let's go kill him. I am sorry, I'm not actually in an attack mode. Never mind, he is no longer extremely in my movement area. Well, let's get up here. He was headed north last time he moved, so let's get up here and be ready to continue chasing him. Honestly, this is a pretty terrifying army against Skaven. I'm glad we have the Promethean Gunnery mobs. Of the fleet. Uh, Obones McDonald is headed north. He could clip this dude real fast. Undead Probably. Invaders. He can get very paid here. I think Obones McDonald can handle this. Okay, so does the Undead Autoresolver. Pleasure. I'm tempted to just hit the auto-resolve on that. That's so positive. Do we kind of have a lot of stuff to get done this episode? Yeah, let's just go. We've seen this battle before. You know what happens. Alright, you get paid. This is not part of the actual campaign. And we are, without question, picking up that Skull Reef on the way up. Alright, Obones McDonald, you are... Okay, you're blue. Oh, you were working on upkeep reduction. A valuable thing. Will Amstrel down here has to deal with vampires. And then were there Kemri coming in? Yeah, there are Kemri coming in. So I guess the extra army that we summon is probably going to have to be like in the Fuming Serpent. Or or maybe in Star Tower. Because they probably wouldn't attack the Fuming Serpent on the first turn. They'd probably siege it and start building towers. So an army in the Star Tower would have time to uh, recruit and then charge them. Alright, so over here, unfortunately, they are able to build up their army again. Now I wonder if maybe the right thing to do is to back off. I don't really want them to be able to, like, run over and grab other cities. We should definitely make sure that we are building these places up. Slotenhoff Peck does not have a garrison building. Is that... Mm, where it's located, that's probably okay. I'm gonna actually cut this. We don't we don't need that. Alright, do I want to just stay here? Will Amstrel is not legendary, so he does have the ability to ambush, and he's standing on pretty ambush-friendly terrain, right? 80% ambush success chance. Maybe we just see if we can catch them headed out in the direction of other stuff. Like, let's go to here, try to be on the road. I don't think they'll go south. I think they'll go toward the temple. Ambush and see if they fall for it. 
Uh, Jimbo did stuff already. Robert Hodgson is in the great arena. Hmm. Do we want him to do anything? Maybe I just want him to recruit? All he can really pull is rifles. Well, that's fine, I guess. Yeah, okay. Um, let's get just rifles. Let's just get all rifles. Oops, all rifles. None of the regiments of renown are... Yeah, none of them are available. He has one unit of melee. Listen, he's going to be the third reserve army. It's not, it's not a big deal. All right. Amelia Hodgson is looking for crimson pools or something, right? Uh... Get going, scum. Well, something tells me that we've found it. I'm going to um, not dig this turn, though. I'm going to get, like, between these two pools, just sort of, sort of in the triangle here. And then we'll dig. I want to make sure I get it on the first try. Viola. Viola was headed to the north? She was headed for that. Okay. That's going to be a bit of a run. And Eve is, I think, coming over here to try to be useful. Possibly. Uh, the Temple of Kara probably should have functional walls. Man, I haven't touched this in a long time, if it's still this busted up, because, like, that... The walls there were broken down by Clan Pestilence. Alright, and then we have the money necessary to hire a lord to hang out over here. Uh, it would be best if it was a vampire's lord with high loyalty. Um, you know, a mastermind lord's not bad. Firestarter. I do like the ambush lords. All right, let's uh, let's get let's get Billy Dew here. Billy Dew, hang out in the Star Tower. Recruit yourself. Some of these guys, and then we'll uh, we'll hit the raised Deadpool pretty hard next turn. Oh, and research is available. We can research things. Uh. So, like, recruit Lord Recruitment cost is a completely negligible cost. Construction cost down for infrastructure buildings. I don't even know what infrastructure... Oh, infrastructure is one of the categories, right? It's like the, the green buildings. Bonus versus infantry for... Just the deckhand mobs and deck droppers. Unfortunately, does not affect Death's Guard. Bonus versus large for the polearm guys. I mean, none of this stuff is very good, right? Lord recruit rank, here recruit rank, growth. Pick up a, a dude who gives leadership. We could, you know what we could do is we could hire another legendary admiral, I guess. To replace one of these many, many lords with. Yeah, that seems okay. So, lore of the deeps, pistol and cutlass, bonus versus large, and a charge bonus for your army. Or recruitment cost down... Laura vampires and wields a polearm, but I dislike everything else about this one. Who defends? What is that about? Yeah. Dread Admiral Two Toes Adley. You're up. I've heard what you do. You know, I know your record. I respect you, so I'm not going to ask about those toes. We are a turn off of the Curse of the Bountiful Treasure, which is great. I mean, we got money. We're not we're not in danger on money right now, but we do have to do a lot of recruiting and rebuilding. Let me guess, you'd like peace? Yeah. Surprisingly, I decline. Who could have predicted? Oh, Malekith himself is up there now. Somewhere. So what's their play? What do they do? Apparently, what they do is flee. And their, their one lord is going to run around damaging walls. Man. Black Arcs. I don't know what the deal is with Black Arcs. They don't seem very good. Maybe they should be able to, like, attack coastal settlements or at least bombard them. Maybe you could have them 
pull up alongside a coastal settlement and not actually attack it, but I don't know, do wall damage or like damage the garrison a little bit each turn or something. Maybe both of those things would be necessary. Oh, interesting. What are you doing? Why are you going north? Well, there's a chance we're going to get attacked by that, uh, that hero on our coming turn. But King Rahoshen, are you actually going to come up north and fight with us? I have no idea where you're going. King Sanakt is going to come over here and hide in the shadow of our boundless patience. Listen, they, they did enough. I'm, I'm cool with them for the rest of the game. They will be the one faction that survives the Great Vampiring. Also, they're skeletons, so it's not like we could convert them anyway. But I'm not planning to convert the Camry. I'm just going to destroy all of them. <laughs> These guys, the Exiles of Nehek, they're cool. They get to live. Sort of. They get to unlive. Unlive kind of sounds like die. Uh-oh, Will Amstrel's ambush was foiled. If those guys just engaged us in the open field, I wonder if we would actually win that fight. We might find out. We couldn't see all of his army. He had a lot of characters. So far, characters have not been super effective against the gun line. The zombies are definitely not going to do anything. He thinks he can do it. He, do, he does have two dragons, two big old terror geists. And, like, vampires are real good fighters, but... They can only endure so many gunshots. A lot of this, um, a lot of this army is remarkably basic. I think we can do this. I think we got these guys. God, I can't wait until we have some more legendary vampire lords to replace these low-level flunkies. Peggy Reigns is the only vampire lord who has managed to survive long enough to actually get good skills. That's not true. We had one other, like, mid-twenties. The person who was the, uh, the treasurer. But she died horribly in a battle with some Kemri or something? Listen, I don't want to say we didn't commemorate her with songs and feasts, but, uh, I do not remember what happened to her, so. Well, we could probably do better than one. This map is terrible. I hate, hate this jungle. Do not like fighting in it at all. Well... I mean, I guess we just start far enough back that the terrible terrain isn't really an issue? They don't have any cavalry or anything. They might try to flank us with flyers, but... But, like... There's nothing we can do about that anyway, and we have the tools to deal with it if they try it. In case you were curious, the tools are rifles. Yeah, we're just going to kind of stand over here. Uh, yeah. Yep. I guess we could start the Morngulls over here. I don't know if they'll necessarily... Oh, outside the white box. I don't know if they'll necessarily be useful, but, like, let the entire enemy approach us like this, and then the Morngulls can do, I don't know, something else. I don't really have a play that isn't just, like, let's all huddle together. Who else is over here? We have... Sirenes, which are, I don't know, gonna hang out over here, and our lord, who should probably be kind of in the middle of things for his leadership aura. And then let's do it. I'll tell you what the Morgals are doing. They're probably giving us some vision here. Alright, it looks like they're marching toward us, even though they don't have to be. I love the way Vampire Count Skeletons walk. This, like, synced up Harryhausen thing that's going on here. This is lovely. Oh no, my units are revealed. Well, in that case, they should leave. The good news is, mostly the enemy units are fairly slow. The bad news is, only mostly. I mean, if we lose the Morgals, we lose the Morgals. It's not the end of the world. They are not a crucial component of our army. And there's nowhere we can put this where it's going to actually do any damage to anything meaningful. Let's just hit some bad units. Keep running. Don't stop to fight. 
Alright, the first the first brave hero has come forth. Now that Banshee is ethereal. And as such, uh, not taking a whole lot of damage from the gunfire. Really, really not taking a lot of damage from the gunfire. Damn. I thought we'd do some at least. Alright, my ghosts fight their ghosts. as well load up okay so the other terror geist is trying to flank us all the way around outside i don't know that i care very much like we got to burn through all these bad units over here um we just like we just have to get through them right so i guess we can we can burn a lot of gunfire on this right now uh, i'm gonna have this unit of crabs come out a little bit and be ready to grab some attention. You are ready to grab some attention. I'm going to throw an invocation over here about. Try to get as many people who are injured as I can. We're going to have to shoot the terror guys down at some point, but I think it is better for us to focus on whittling away their chaff first, because their chaff is going to potentially be a problem for us if they get into the, the gunners even though they're all individually quite bad at fighting. This guy is a great coward. Alright, my lord against their lord, but also there's a bunch of Death Guard hacking at him. Seems fair. We are, in fact, getting units in the melee, but there's not. There's only so much I can do about it. Uh, we need you guys to get over here and fight. The terror, okay, the terror guys fled already. The truest cowardice. That's a necromancer. I didn't even notice. The hero that rode bravely into us over here is a wizard. This is a bad thing to do when you are a wizard. Guys, show him why. Make him understand that. Right, you guys should get ready for the terror guys. You guys are just going to run forward and attack something, I guess. Their hero is losing pretty badly in this melee in here, which is good for us. We have this available. Notice the vampires just chilling out and watching. They should, like, they should get in here. They're actually good at fighting. The, nec the necromancer is doing what they should have done, and they're doing nothing. Where did that terror guys go? Things are remarkably sneaky, given their size. Okay, you guys are getting all flustered. Let's try to remember what the job is here. Honestly, there's some chance that my um, that my gunners can just kill normal skeleton warriors and zombies in melee combat. Because my gunners have, you know, a level or two of stats, and it's hard to overestimate how bad, or it's hard to overstate how bad zombies are at fighting. They really are terrible. So the terror guys is up here. Where's that? Where's their vamp? Where's their banshee lord? Did she get away? She got away. Is her name Adel Wolfa? That's pretty good. That's a cool. One. All right, they just have a lot of bodies on us. Uh, fortunately, it looks like their lord is getting totally dead, maximum dead. Turns out, Vampire plus Depth Guard beats Vampire. Oh, the Terror Geist landed. Get in there. It's trying to save the Necromancer. We can punish it for its hubris. Right, as we break down this front line, we're going to turn and fight their, their good value units. I guess you guys can start trying to work out this Terror Geist over here now. Because they already can't fire at anything else. Their lord is so close to dead, and it's going to be so good for us when he goes. Okay, Necromancer died. That's that's pretty good for us. The Necromancer himself is probably not a real danger. Uh, my guess is that they weren't going to spend a lot of uh, stuff on his spells anyway. Oh, see, look at this. Look how easily we're firing at the large unit now. Sometimes we have so much trouble with this. 
Honestly, Krabs, I don't think you're doing anything over here. Go fight melee. Oh, the Lord thinks he can escape. Don't let him. Don't let him do it. Oh, is the, the overcast isn't nine because I don't have it maxed out. You guys forget what you were doing? Get over here and fight some fight some dudes. Alright. I'm not 100% sure what that sound is, in case you were wondering. Seems bad. And have Will Amstrel get in on the terror geist. <laughs> the terror geist managed to evade our uh, deckhands by getting in the air for approximately half a second. They completely forgot what they were doing. Hey y'all, feel free to shoot at the terror guys that's literally right in front of you that everybody else is already shooting at. Okay, turns out it's under control. Well, that doesn't mean you don't have to shoot anymore. Alright, let's get these guys... I think what I want to do with these guys is form them up over here. I know it's kind of a walk. Um, but... We need more bodies over here, and we need more people shooting into this forest. I know shooting into the forest is like a really not ideal way to do this. Uh, we are probably, we're getting one power per 11 seconds. We probably will be able to pull off a decent overcast invocation. We're going to have to wait a little bit on it. Uh, yeah, the Morgols are still finishing off these zombies. Okay. So we can turn the mortars. That'd probably be a good idea. But yeah, this battle's gone really well. <coughs> These rotting Promethean gunnery mobs are awesome against low-tier troops like zombies and stuff. It's been really fun to use them this way. Okay, our fleet admiral's gotten all stuck in other stuff. He was supposed to be coming over here to fight this terror geist. With his big old pole on. See, we're firing over our troops into small guys now, because the elevation, I guess. But it's weird how sometimes elevation makes it so we can't fire at all. <laughs> don't let him get away. You guys, you guys too, don't... Aw. Well, he got away. Have our lord run kind of around here. For right now, I'm actually going to just halt these guys. Hold on. Hold on. Do more damage to us than you are to them. Ah, he fell for it. Thought it was safe. Oh, we're probably not actually going to be able to kill their Banshee, but we can probably um, completely break the battle and then have the Banshee fall apart when everybody else dies. The Terror Geist is pretty close. And that Banshee is uh, Banshee's tough. I'm going to pull the Depth Guard back. Try to open up the angles a little bit for everybody else. Give the gunners a little bit more to shoot at. Oh, there it is. They're losing it. One too many bodies on the ground. Alright, and that Banshee will eventually fade. It's going to take a minute. Yeah, not bad for an army that's, like, very, very not veteran. Pretty undeveloped. Pretty much fresh out of the box. Turns out our units are pretty good, and their units were less good. They they forgot to bring good units. Those losses are, like, we hardly lost anything there. It does seem like animated hulks just, like, just fall apart as soon as you get get him into battle. 294 kills on the Morngols. Nobody else got even close. Wow. I mean, they're fighting they're fighting bad infantry, right? They spent a fair amount of that battle just sort of plugged into units of skeletons and zombies, but even so, that's very impressive. Dead ocean. 
All right, well, we should be able to finish that army off very easily on our turn and then take the Pox Marsh. And then maybe we have to have one army hang out in the Pox Marsh and another army hang out in the Star Tower because it's starting to be the case that we are we have kind of a long border here. We are vulnerable uh, along a large area. Maybe this is what I was thinking that uh, Peggy Reigns was going to have to respond to. Interesting that they didn't try to go for the settlement. Wonder if they're trying to waste my time. So what is this what is this darker color here? Which which group of dudes is this? This is the vampire counts, okay. Like where the hell is chaos? If the vampire counts own the north coast again. Are the chaos dudes like right here and the vampire counts are just resettling in their wake? Oh, hey, that's Colic Sun Eater right there. He just burned down Langui. Oh, all right. I'm surprised by that. All right, let's rumble. So this is not really a Skaven army. I think they might not have access to uh, the Menace Below, the ability to summon extra units onto us. And then, of course, we have the advantage of it being an aquatic battle. Their troops are going to be bogged down and have a hard time moving. They have the advantage of Warp Lightning Cannons being very good. At least they don't have any Plague Catapults. That would be much worse. The AI seems to love Warp Lightning Cannons and almost never build the Catapults. Oh, this is a cool battlefield. Uh, Peggy's army is a little bit less vulnerable to the Warp Lightning on account of her having a heal. I was a little reluctant to commit such a developed character and army to um, to defending Ulthuan, but you know what? She's seen a lot of action, actually. I guess one more on this side is probably good. And then over here. All right, we are ready to respond to things. A little bit of melee that I don't really know what to do with, so they're just gonna like stand over here, probably. And then Peggy herself needs to be kind of in the center. Damage myself a little bit for even more power. Why not? Why wouldn't I do that? So they're on the offense here. They attacked us. They have to come to us if they want to win the battle. So they are going to actually just walk into our range. I don't know how long it will take, or how visible they will be while they are doing it. We don't really have a fast-moving unit to go out there and give us scouting info. But we can see, you know, if they approach across the flat ground, we can see that. Right, the Warp Lightning Cannons just have better range. Well, not ideal. We can certainly do some of this, though. I'm surprised they came after us. I'm caught off guard a little bit here. Oh, well, we got lots and lots of winds of magic with which to uh, withstand the storm. I don't know that we have a way of rapidly approaching. Like, we can't actually do anything to those warp lightning cannons without moving forward. And we're talking about quite a lot of moving forward. Interesting that it's only one unit. Didn't they have two? The other ones are not visible to us at the moment. Don't know where they would be. As soon as we see a little bit more fire here, we'll hit the reload skill button. Yeah, that works for me. Like, why do we have so many units who just aren't firing, though? Like, everybody has vision. Kill. Kill enemies. Kill them dead. Kind of looks like we may not have to do a ton of, uh, a ton of crabbing here. Kind of seems like the gunfire is going to do the trick. Yep, okay, this side of the battle completely collapsed, so let's, uh, 
Let's change up our strategy over here. Actually, I'm, I'm going to go a little bit more direct. And you guys need to get a move on. We got stuff to fight. I guess, actually, we can have them charge, right? Like maybe have the least expert one of them come up here. You come up here. And these dudes, hold on, did I? That's you. That's you, okay. Oh yeah, these guys just do that. Okay, so they have warp fire throwers. I don't think we've seen a lot of this. Skaven have actual flamethrower gun teams. These units are really cool and actually pretty powerful. They do not, however, have the ability to move while firing. Or to fire while moving, I guess, is maybe the correct expression of that. What is this lord doing? I thought he was running right into the guns, but he seems to have changed his mind. Get in melee mode, get in here and let him know what's up. Okay, I think we're just about done here. This is looking pretty close to done. I appreciate this attempted side charge. I don't think it's quite working out the way they were hoping. Yeah, the doom the doom wheel got caught in the concave. That's a shame. Doom wheels are cool. They're cool units and you almost never get to see them do anything. Because the AI can't really command them, and um, I also don't, I can't, also can't do that. <laughs> they're, basically, they're chariots that shoot lasers. I've never been able to use a chariot unit in any intelligent way. I think the problem is they, they maybe require a little bit more babysitting than I expect a unit in Total War to require. It kind of seems like they... Um, uh, it kind of seems like they have to be charged in and out a lot. If you let them stand and fight, they, they tend to get torn apart. I guess I could just pause even more than I already do. I will say, I'm a little gun-shy about the pausing. I like a, When I'm in battles where I pause a lot, I tend to apologize and stuff. Because, man, people have, in ways that are like kind of weird and inappropriate, people have yelled at me about pausing, like... Like it's some kind of cheating that I'm doing. It's a weird thing. Alright, so we earned ourselves some... Oh, are they going to want some too? Uh, yeah, okay. I think I have time for this. This doesn't look like a great army. Peggy's healing skills kept us from taking almost any damage there. I guess we'll just earn ourselves another Regiment of Renown. I didn't realize these guys were going to be so eager to attack me. I thought I was going to have to chase them down. So here... I think this is actually going to be easier. They do have these Doomfire Warlocks. These seem like cool units. They have a couple of flyers. They have their... Uh, uh, I can't remember. Their Charybdis, I think. They have two different kinds of Hydras. I think that's the Charybdis. Uh, can we maybe do better than zero? I'm going to do exactly the same thing. I kind of wish we could have saved the loadout. I just want that. I want that exact battle. Get some decent XP off of that as well. And once again, they are on the attack, so we can just stand back and let them come to us, which is always nice. Alright. Now they have bolt throwers. The bolt throwers are indirect fire uh, artillery, so they actually probably will do a little bit more total damage to us than the warp fire cannons did. They can fire them from anywhere within range. I really like the rainbows. They have really good, like, weird, mystical-looking rainbow effects in this game. Ah, y'all can't march any faster than that, really? I mean, they'll get here someday. Maybe this is their plan. This is how elves do it. They just wait all their enemies out. Try to get them to die of old age. 
Well, I got bad news for you guys on that front. <laughs> That's probably not going to work on us. It's like one of their bolt throwers is set up and shooting over... Yeah. I think they're shooting at my crabs. Which... It has a chance of doing some real damage. So the bolt throwers have two fire modes. They have this thing here that's sort of like... Shotgun blast. And then they have a more cannon-style anti-large shot. Um... My experience has been that neither one of them are, like, really great. It's just the, the elf armies, you know, they don't need to have good artillery. That's not really what their thing is. They have all of their extremely elite, um, individual units. That's their deal. Can we get some gunfire, maybe? There we go. Just make, <laughs> make mince me to these dudes. The cavalry are like, they really want to get around, but they don't want to get too close to the crabs. These guys really shouldn't get this close. I think they probably are not ready for enemies that have guns. They thought they were going to come over here and just have a real easy, uh, real easy kiting to do. And honestly, we can just run them off. Our troops have uncovered hidden foes. Oh no, there were stealthy dudes, and they're trying to flank us, and it's sort of working. Alright, uh, I want to make sure that we send somebody to go and disrupt the artillery. I guess this is a good time to do that. Uh, you could throw out an AoE heal, I guess. Keep this rolling. And once again, we do not... It doesn't look to me like we're going to see a whole lot of actual melee combat on this one. I think we mostly got them. Let's make sure we are focusing on these flyers. Kind of looks like we are not focusing on the flyers. They don't really have a lot else going on. So we can definitely just get in here. I could hit them with the Curse of Years. Probably want to wait until they hit the ground for that, I guess. I can't tell if that's going to affect them. Let's wait till they hit the ground. But that'll uh, that'll nuke their melee attack pretty badly. And could you three maybe start focusing on their lord? Their lord has ammo, so he's unlikely to try to close on us very much. I suspect he'll just try to fight at range, and we can uh, we can make some stuff happen with that. So I am letting our uh, letting our crabs get kited a little bit here. They're definitely going to take a bunch of damage this way. You guys grab them. See if we can back out the units that are engaged in melee with the manticores. Do not melee that thing. Right, you can get melee mode. You can... Oh, never mind. Already broke. Right, well, I'm going to have her just melee the, the dudes here. I kind of jumped out of the area. I mean, it looks like we're going to take a lot more damage on this one than we did on the last one. We might actually lose some units. Their lord is fleeing, their lord is dead. Do believe that should be the end of that. Honestly, the morale is holding... Okay, never mind. I was going to say, the morale is holding remarkably well. But I think that was it. Yeah, I mean, witness the power of a fully upgraded vampire sorcerer. It's just so hard to get damage to stick against an army like this. No meaningful losses in either battle. I do not remember what regiment of renown was related to this army, but it's cool that we got another one, I guess. What would it be? What would what would it be for Dark Elves? I guess the the Promethean Gunnery mob was Skaven, so maybe it's units that are good against this army composition. So against the Dark Elf army, it could be basically anything. Not to rag on those guys too hard, but like 
they're not very good, are they? <laughs> and we got a new treasure map from that battle as well. Let's have a quick look at that. That was a very successful set of enemy turns. Okay, so it's another big skull. We got ourselves the Rotting Prometheans and Deck Gunners. Okay. That's fine. Two Toes Adley is available. The treasure thing is available. Let's just do that now so I don't forget. Okay, and we are in, I would say, a commanding position in a bunch of places with 50,000 gold to our name and an awful lot of dead enemies at our feet. Uh, the next turn or two are going to feel really, really good. So that is going to be it for us for today. Thank you all so much for watching. Come back next time when hopefully we do more than one turn in an hour. And we'll see you then.